everyone. Welcome to the to a sneak preview of the Bull City International Film Festival. My name is Tiffany DeQuitt, and today we are joined by TJ Noel Sullivan, the director and writer of the short film On the Whistle. TJ, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so you've probably been asked this a few times, but just to start us off and introduce you to the audience, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Did you always know you wanted to be a filmmaker? Um, I did not always know I wanted to be a filmmaker. So I'm, I'm from Hartford, Connecticut. Um, and in high school, I kind of like just happened to take a video production class. Um, and pretty quickly I was like, oh, making videos is fun. And so I really actually got started in filmmaking um, in place. I used to have like different classes where they'd say, oh, you can write a 15 page paper or you can make a documentary film. Um, so I started, that's kind of my start in, in filmmaking. Um, and then I made my first narrative film, I guess, as a senior in high school and thought it thought having the control of like writing a script and, and directing the camera and the actors and all that was so much fun. Um, and so that was kind of, that was when I, I knew I was interested, um, but I went into college. Um, I, w I studied at Yale film studies, but at first I didn't really know if I wanted to be film studies. Um, but after a couple of years, I decided that. I really was excited about it um, and was making short films every year. Um, and On the Whistle is actually my thesis in film studies. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely for the last couple of years, I've known that um, I wanted to be a filmmaker and, and that I wanted to direct, um, but it, it was not necessary. I, I, I'm jealous of filmmakers who can be like, oh, I was 11 and I went to see this one movie yeah. and like, that changed everything for me. Because it, it was a little bit more of a gradual progression for me. All right, that sounds good. So I want to talk about your film for a little bit. It's, it's, I really love the movie. It's such an intense sort of dynamic with really good messages. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, what your inspirations were for the movie? What helped curate such a story? Yeah, I mean, I think short films are really hard because it's like hard to fit yeah. a story into this, this, you know, for me, it's 20 minutes, fit a, a complete narrative. Um, and, you know, this, this, the idea behind this was that it was both going to be a complete narrative, but also a proof of concept. Because actually the first draft of this script I wrote was like a 45 page um, film that was bordering between like it wanted to be a feature, but also kind of mm -hmm. was a short. Um, and so that I, I then went back to the drawing board and said, okay, let me tighten it down to a 20 minutes where I just focus on the tryout. Because um, I think right tryouts in themselves, I, I played high school basketball. And so I think that was definitely a big inspiration for me, um, having been in that situation and knowing that high pressure. Um, but I also thought that, that it was a great um, way to dive deeper into some of the themes that I wanted to focus in on of white entitlement and the importance of black authority figures. Um, and so that was, I, I thought the, the, this world worked really well of using the world of high school basketball to look at this relationship between this suburban white kid uh, and this black head coach um, and kind of the, um, the how his entitlement butts up against that authority figure. Wow, that was really great. Um, that was really interesting. I, um, the part about the, the dynamic between a white suburban kid and then the, um, the coach as well. Um, I want to go further and talk more about those characters because I love the dynamic and the relationship between both Luke and the coach. So can you talk a little bit about what it was like working with your actors um, on set, especially for those two? Yeah, I mean, the, my actors were such a, such a pleasure. Um, and I really got lucky with who we were able to cast for the role. Um, both, both of our castings were really funny and unique. For, for our coach, Danny Johnson, who's an incredible actor, um, he's been, he is a actor based in New York and he has been on every TV show that's ever shot in New York. He's, you know, he's played the police captain on two episodes of Blue Bloods and then been on all the Law and Orders and, you know, all of the different cable TV shows that have shot in New York. He, he has a guest appearance for one or a couple of episodes. Um, and so really, I mean, like, was such an incredible actor and we actually, uh, I found his work um, and had been watching his work online and we cold emailed him and said hey we love your work we have this project it's shooting for three days in Connecticut is there any way that you'd be willing or be interested in the role um, and I think we honestly got a little lucky because he grew up 
as a pretty big basketball fan. Um, and so he was very interested in the role. He said, oh, actually, I've never played a basketball coach before, and I'm a basketball fan. So, yeah, I would love to do it. Um, so he was, you know, we were so lucky to cast him. Um, and working with him on set was really something amazing in that he came just so prepared. I mean, again, he was coming on to what really technically was a student film, right? We, we tried to uh, boost it up, and, and we had a big crew and stuff. So hopefully it didn't quite feel like a student film. But technically it was still a student film. Um, but he came and brought his A game to each performance um, and was just incredible. It, like, at, so, at times I found myself watching, like, this is amazing. Like, the the big takedown scene um, that kind of happens about three quarters of the way through the movie, our big climax, you know, the, we did the first scene for the first take. And I was like, oh, my God, that was like, that that could be the movie right there. That I don't know that I need to do a second take. But I was like, you know what? let's do one more and like, do you want to try something different? He's like, yeah, you know, I have something different I want to try. And we went through four times and all four times he had a different take on the scene. All four oh. times, you know, he brought something new to the scene and all four times were incredible. And actually, you know, it was such a fun scene to edit. Um, it was challenging in that like we ever, I was like, oh my God, I love all four of these takes and yet they're all so different. Um, but editing it together then made my like, uh, it was such a, a fun project to edit because he brought so much to the role um, and just had the ability to nail it on the first take so that we could use our second take to try something different. Um, and then Aiden, who plays Luke, also, we actually, we found him through an open casting. Um, but, you know, I I think I reviewed about 300 self-tapes um, for the film. And as soon as I watched it, I said, he is Luke there. He, like, nailed, he nailed the essence of character he had of just like having this charismatic smile and not being too unlikable but at the same time uh having this being able to capture that energy of entitlement um that i think really worked for the character um and so he you know was an incredible actor and brought so much um funnily enough he was not the best basketball player um wow. but we brought him uh, a friend of mine is a basketball trainer jaquan starks is a basketball trainer in hartford who's great and we brought him to a two-hour session where Jaquan taught him the four moves that he does on screen. Oh, he like wow. very specifically learned how to do those four moves. And then he spent a week. It was we were shooting. We shot in January, so we spent a week in December at an outdoor basketball court in Connecticut, which is freezing cold. And he would just do those moves over and over. And he would text me be like, "All right, TJ, I just spent two hours." That move, like, I still haven't perfected it, but I'm pretty close. Um, and so by the time he got on set, you know, when he was doing those four moves, you could, we, he was on set with a lot of former high school basketball players who were real basketball players. Um, but when he was doing those four moves, you couldn't tell that he didn't have the same basketball experience. Oh, that was so interesting. Um, so were there any other challenges that um, you faced both writing the script and then directing the movie? Yeah, I mean, I think... Uh, Right, writing a script, I was really fortunate to have a, I think I spent at a year long process between when I wrote the first draft of the script and when I actually shot it. Um, directing wise, I think uh, this was my first time directing anything more action related, right? I, I directed other scripts before. This was my first time really focusing on how we were going to do the action. Um, and I think it's a challenge in that just having like, uh, you know, it's hard to necessarily practice that. I actually went with my iPhone and a friend to our location, and I shot most of our action things I actually just shot on my iPhone and then cut together. Uh, and then me and my DP were able to watch that back and go, oh, okay, yeah, like switching from a handheld shot there to a shot on sticks, that's going to feel too jarring. We need to do something different there. Um, so, so that was definitely helpful, but it was learning that vi visual language on the fly, figuring out, okay, how is this scene going to cut together? How are we, especially when we have, you know, up to 10 bodies at once all moving around this court, how are we going to capture the thing so that the audience can, you know, pinpoint in on what we want them to focus on while also making it feel real was definitely a challenge. So I want to go back and, um, so comparing the very first film you ever wrote and directed to this one on the whistle, in what ways have you felt like you've grown as a filmmaker? 
That's a good question. I, so my, my goal as a filmmaker is always to make new mistakes as a director um, because every project I've done, I've definitely made mistakes that I, I'm watching the final cut. No, but if, as long as, in my mind, as long as it's a new mistake, as long as it's something new, then I'm very happy. Um, and so I think some of the some of the things that I've definitely done in the past are um, tried to do too much with a short film, tried to make a short film that in 20 minutes covers too broad of an expanse and, and really tries to pack a feature down into a short. Um, and so that was something that I really worked with here. It's like, how do I make this? feel complete in 20 minutes, but not try and cram too much into it. Um, also just, I mean, the working with actors piece, I know a lot of directors come from a background either in theater or as actors themselves where they feel very comfortable with actors. Um, and when I, I came from more of the technical side, I was really interested in camera and those kinds of things. Um, and so that was definitely something for the four years leading up to directing the short. I, I spent a lot of time I actually took a workshop on directing actors, um, but then also just spent a lot of time trying to hone my craft and figure out what what my relationship with my actors was going to be. Because um, I think in this, especially like having a good relationship and being able to bring the best out of Danny and Aiden uh, was so crucial in order to make this film work. All right, that sounds good. And so this segues us into our final question. And so do you have any advice for beginning filmmakers who see this movie and, you know, just watching what you do? Do you have any advice for them? My, I think my advice is keep making films. Um, because if you go back to, I mean, on my YouTube channel, you can probably see most of my early films. Um, like so much of filmmaking is just making mistakes. So you go into your first film and you're like, this is going to be my great film that's going to get into Sundance and be super successful. And then you shoot it and you're like, oh my God, there's so many things that like on set, I had no idea was going to be an issue, but in the editing room, like, woo. Um, and so I think that is such a big thing of just like getting those, those you're going to make those mistakes. Um, and you can try and prep by watching lots of movies and listening to lots of interviews. But the best thing you can do is go out and shoot something and go through the process of editing it and actually releasing it to the world. And then like being able to look at it and say, oh yeah, okay, this is what I did well and this is what I'm gonna work on next time. And then get right to work on planning that next project that you're gonna do next time. For a shot, a short for six years in a row. Um, and again, like I said, if I just am making a new mistake every time, I feel like that's success. Um, and then the, the, the second piece of advice that I'll give is your collaborators, as a director, your collaborators are so important. I was so fortunate on this film to be able to recruit an incredible cinematographer, Mike Curry, a great producer, Eric Bloomquist, of course, my actors, um, and just a, a great creative team around me. Um, and it makes your life so much easier on set if you have a great creative team, then you can say, oh, I don't need to come up with 100 great ideas. I just need to be able to, when great ideas are presented to me, and when my cinematographer says, hey, I have an idea for a shot, say, yes, okay, I like that, that works. So if you're able to bring great creatives around you, then that makes your life a lot easier. That's some really good advice. So um, that concludes our video for today. Thank you so much for joining us, TJ. We're really excited to see what else you do in the future. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm excited for the festival. Yeah, so if you haven't seen TJ's film On the Whistle, I would highly recommend you check it out. And don't forget the festival takes place virtually from March 5th to March 8th, and we hope to see you all there. Thank you.